Before we jump into today's show, I've got a really exciting announcement to make. The autumn cohorts for Start Your Podcast group program are now open. There are five dates between September and October, and it's a six-week program that will get you launched before Christmas. So if podcasting was on your to-do list this year, if you really want to get your podcast up and done by the end of 2023, then come and join me for one of those cohorts and let's make it happen. I have a free masterclass available for you called Understanding the Power of Podcasting. You can go over to donnaede.com forward slash masterclass, watch the masterclass, and get access to that enrolment. I hope to see you in one of the autumn cohorts very soon. That's donnaede.com forward slash masterclass. Let's get back to the show. This is the Wedding Procast and today on the show we are talking about Clubhouse. It's an exclusive app and everyone's talking about it but what's all the hype about? I'm going to walk you through my experiences on today's episode so listen in. Welcome back everybody. I'm Donna and I am the host of the Wedding Pro Cast. I am a 10-year wedding photographer veteran and I am the founder of the Society of Professional Wedding Vendors. So if you are old or new to the podcast and haven't yet subscribed, I urge you to do that on Apple Podcasts. If you found this through the website, then scroll to the bottom of the page and join the podcast tribe so you don't miss an episode. Today, I'm going to walk you through Clubhouse, the pros and cons and my experience so far. So let's get to it. So let's start with the basics. At the moment, at the time of this recording, it is on an invite only basis. It is only available for Apple users and those Apple users need to have iOS 13 or above. Above. So there is this exclusivity to it. It launched in the US last year, but it only got loud here in the UK in the last few months. So for those of you who have absolutely no idea what Clubhouse is, it is very similar to a Zoom meeting, but without the video. So it's split into different areas. There is a hallway and this is a corridor of rooms. These are the terms, they aren't actually corridors or rooms but it's a hallway that has rooms in and you can go in and out of these rooms. There are also clubs so people can apply to run a club on a certain topic and you can run rooms within the clubs and have club only rooms or rooms that are open to the public um, for those clubs. And then you've got your profile and this is where you let everybody know a little bit about you, who you are, who you're looking to connect with and things like that. So it's a great networking tool. When you enter a room, you will be in the audience. You will have no ability to speak and you can stay in, listen to a room for as long as the room is open. If you want to leave, you can click a button that says leave quietly and you will go back to your hallway. If you do want to join in the conversation, you can click a raise hand button and the moderators can invite you onto what they call the stage. At the time of this podcast, you enter the stage area with your mic on. So etiquette dictates that you should mute yourself immediately as soon as you get on stage so that you're not interrupting the conversation. There are lots of beginner rooms run on Clubhouse. So Clubhouse Jeff is a really good guy to go and find. He runs a beginner room. And then on Sunday at 4pm, Mac Laubscher, he runs a room for beginners as well. So you can get all the ins and outs of beginner Clubhouse etiquette in those rooms, which will just help you to understand the app a little more and just be able to navigate things and understand it a little bit more. So I wanted to have a look at the pros and cons of the app and oftentimes you may think oh it's brand new it's exciting but there are always drawbacks to new things but there's a lot of pros as well so I wanted to cover both of them because it would be unfair for me to just sing the praises of something without looking at the 
other side. So with the cons, it can be a huge time suck. There are people pinging you into rooms. There are the more people you follow, the more notifications you're going to get that rooms are going on. And if you have your phone sat next to you at your desk, it is going to be distracting. So there are options to adjust the level of notifications on certain people. They aren't that great in all honesty. You can say never notify, which means that you'll never know when they're in a room. So what's the point in following them? You've got your regular level or you can always be notified when somebody goes into a room. But you can follow up to two and a half thousand people at the moment. So imagine following two and a half thousand people and having it on, you know, the regular notifications and if they are based all around the world then you could literally be getting pinged every half an hour all day every day so it can be a time suck if you are the sort of person that can listen to the radio while you're working then you can obviously have it playing in that capacity you can sit in the audience and just listen in but for me I find that very difficult I can't listen to the radio where I work and when I'm working it splits my mindset so you know I'll either end up pausing work because I'm intently listening or I end up catching the tail of end of something that was on the radio and I'm like oh what what was it that he said just before that. So if you can't actually dedicate time to it and you're a person that gets distracted by conversation, then I'd say definitely make sure that you are not having those notifications on your phone or not looking at your phone during the day when you need to be working because (laughs) it will distract you. And then once you're in the app, you will still get notified of other people starting rooms and stuff. So you'll find yourself ping-ponging from room to room trying to find something that interests you and it can take a lot of time. So there are a lot of people on Clubhouse claiming to be experts. And I'm not saying that these people aren't experts. What I am saying is you need to be making sure that you are verifying people before you start taking them at their word. So like I said, you've got your profile and you will find a lot of people in there saying, I'm a a seven figure earner. I'm a multimillionaire. I'm this, I'm that. Now, don't get me wrong. There are a lot of people on the app who are these things and they are on there giving freely of their time to help others and give back because they're at the top of their game and they want to bring people up with them. But there are also a lot of people that are claiming to be that and aren't. And the issue is it can be very hard to tell the difference. So for example, if you have somebody who is in the real world, um, working in real world business, they may well not have a lot of social media presence. They might not be on some of the social medias or they may have very little content on their social medias and their social media may not reflect what you would expect of somebody who is earning high figures. But the fact is that they work in a real world business and they probably don't want to share too much online because they value their privacy. And because their business is real world business rather than online business, there is no reason for them to be posting stuff like that on their social medias because that's not how they get their business. So it may seem like they're being fake because they haven't got that social proof. But again, social proof can be bought. So somebody who is saying that they are an expert and they're earning this much money and they can help you do that may well have the social proof to back it up, may have thousands of followers, be posting regularly, having lots of um, posts that say that they're doing these fabulous things, etc. But all of that can be made up. So It's just a word of caution to just be careful and mindful when you go into these rooms. If you do go up onto stage and you ask a question and you get some advice and tips back, just use your common sense, guys. That's what I'm saying. Use your common sense. Make sure you're verifying people. Look into it. If you do not know these people in person and you don't know anybody who does know these people in person, then try and look at their advice from an outsider's point of view, from not from the point of view of you needing the help. But if your friend received this advice, 
would you look at it and say, that seems like a solid piece of advice. We've all got common sense and you know when things make sense or not. So just a word of warning there to use your common sense and make sure that you are verifying these people, verifying that information um, and not wholly relying on a room of strangers to give you business advice. Another negative is that people are speaking in real time. It's not curated like social media. It is happening in real time and sometimes you're going to hear things that you don't like. These are people talking with no filter. So just be cautious of that. You are able to leave rooms. Don't feel that you've got to stay. And if somebody is speaking to you in a way that you don't like, don't feel that you've got to take it. So I was in a room, I think it was on my second day on Clubhouse, and I was really upset by something that happened in one of the rooms where somebody had come in and basically started bashing somebody who I know to be very successful in what they do, who I have followed in the online space for many, many years, who is very successful in what they do and how they do it. And this person came in complaining about them or trying to belittle what they do. And rather than the moderator of the room turning around and saying, look, you know, everybody does things differently. She's very successful in what she does you know, let it be. The moderator actually joined in on that conversation, um, which I didn't think was appropriate. The room wasn't being moderated in a way that I felt was fair. So I left that room. If you do see anything that is, you know, bullying or harassment or anything like that, you are able to report people and you are able to block people. So there are functions there, but it is a live spoken platform so you are going to come across some things that you aren't happy with people are setting up rooms that you might not feel are appropriate you don't have to go into them so it is one of those things where you just have to be very mindful of what you're letting in to your space you have the ability to leave a room you have the ability not to enter a room in the first place if you know it's going to be a trigger for you so just be mindful of that and try not to get too offended by other people you know I left that room and and that was the end of that. But it was a negative experience for me. And I wasn't sure that I wanted to go back onto Clubhouse after that. But after sitting with it for a little while, I realised, you know, that's one one room, one moderator, one other person. And that's not the whole platform. So I have had many more brilliant experiences on there, which we will get to in a moment. So the final thing that I wanted to bring to your attention is it can be glitchy. So it is still early days on the platform. They're still working things out. It's growing quite quickly and the systems are struggling to cope a little bit with that. So at peak times, you know, when the UK is sort of in the evening and the Americans are getting up in the morning, it tends to get overloaded. And so you can find it being a bit more glitchy around those times of the day. So middle of the day, it's quite good because we're the only ones that are really awake and with it. The Americans are asleep. The Australians are going to bed. So it is it is reacting to the number of people that are online using it. So sometimes it can be glitchy. And this can show itself in the the app not functioning the way you expect. So if you were to try and pull down to refresh a room, which actually changes everybody's pictures if they've changed it, puts everybody back in order, you might find that you get the wheel of doom. Um, you can still hear the conversation, but the, the page is kind of pause. It's not refreshing. You can find that if you're a moderator in a room, that you lose the ability to be able to accept people up onto stage. So if people are putting their hands up to say they've got a question, they want to come and talk, you can't actually that let them up on stage and that happened to me at the weekend when I was moderating a room I just couldn't bring this person up and neither could any of the other moderators and so there are glitches the owners are working on that and it is something they're trying to fix and obviously as it grows it's going to have teething problems like anything else so just to be aware and be a bit 
communication with that that it's not always the moderator's fault or the the room's fault for some of these things it's just technical difficulties that they're trying to iron out so now I wanted to talk about the positives because there are some positives I always like to start with the negative because I'd rather end on a high note so with all of those things being said it is really, really great for reaching out to people that you would never normally reach in real life. This includes influencers, mentors, and people who inspire you. So there are people in the online space like Amy Porterfield, Stu McLaren, Jasmine Starr, Jenna Kutcher. They are all on there they're all in rooms they are all adding value so if you know any of those people if you follow them on social then these guys are actually live working in clubhouse so you can make these connections you can follow them over there see what rooms they go in actually can have conversations with the people who you know to be um, influencers in their space you know to be savvy business people so if there are people that you know that you would like to connect with you can connect with them on this app which is something that's a lot different to any of the other apps because you're having a live conversation with them in that moment so it's really good you can also find rooms on completely niche interests like meditation, morning routines, business, coaching, hobbies. You can start your own room if you don't see a room that you want to be in um, and connect with like-minded people. So with meditation, you might walk into a room that is completely silent and that would be like, I did it the other day actually, I walked into this room and it said it was, um, they called it silent healthcare connection or something and I think the idea of that room was that you actually just go in there and people would just go on look at your profile and follow you but you're just there to say this is my area of expertise and you can connect with me it was very strange (laughs) but you can also get these meditation rooms where there will be maybe music playing in the background Um, maybe somebody's taking you through some breath work so there is a lot of different things going on in Clubhouse and it just depends on your interest and what you say when you sign up you can actually select the things that interest you those are the things that are going to fill your hallway so um, if you aren't seeing some of these rooms then you can go and change your interests in your settings to fill them in or you can search organically you can type in emojis are searchable you can type in words and it will bring up people and rooms that contain those words so there's a lot of interesting things to find so as much as it's a negative the positive flip side is getting input and advice from people that are that much further ahead than you so where I said it's the the negative is you've got these people that are saying they are one thing and might not necessarily be that thing giving you advice the flip side is that you can actually get input and advice for people that are just that those few steps ahead of you on the ladder or or people that are even further ahead that have been where you've been and can advise you on the next steps you need to take you're able to then take these conversations off of clubhouse and make real life connections with people build your business build your connections and find clients. So it's a really great networking tool. The other positive thing is you can start your own rooms. So you can book them in um, weekly, tell people that you're going to do a weekly room and you can build a following. So if you have a particular niche, if you were, for example, a wedding planner and you wanted to do a a weekly bride planning hour that would attract people who are engaged to you then you could say that you are going to run a room every Sunday for an hour you could set it up you could get in there you use your keywords make sure you've got bride in there engagement and things like that and you can draw people into that room and you can build a following now obviously this is a giving platform so you would give the information you would talk to people brides would have questions and then you have the ability to say you know this is what I do for a living you know come over to Instagram follow me there drop me a DM let's have a chat 
and see if we can work together. So it's a great way of building your authority on the app because if you are giving genuine help and genuine tips for people, then they're going to keep coming back. And if they like your personality, if they like these tips you're giving them, then they're more likely to want to work with you as well. So it is a great way of getting yourself known and getting yourself out there. Obviously, as I say, at the moment, it is only available for Apple users. So it is going to restrict your um, market a little and it is worldwide. So you would have to maybe put in there for UK brides, um, which would let people know that you're a UK supplier and therefore you will still get people from other countries coming into your rooms. It, it's not that exclusive, you know, you, you wouldn't want to eliminate people. But by saying you're a UK wedding vendor and it's a UK based room, then the expectations are set and you're not going to have somebody from America come in there and say, how do I book you? Because they know that you're based in the UK. So it's just a way of setting the expectations of your room from the outset. So that was my whistle stop tour of Clubhouse. So if you are not on Clubhouse, I urge you to give it a go. Be careful who you follow, curate your interests and set a timer because some of those rooms run 24 7 they have moderators that take over from each other and they keep the rooms going for hours so you could get totally lost in that and then take advice with a pinch of salt make sure you are checking out the people that you are taking advice from get some verification on their abilities and if you have any questions at all, please reach out on social media. You can find me on Insta at Donna SPWV. Send me a DM and if I can answer it, I will. I hope you found this helpful. If you did, I'd appreciate an iTunes review. If you go to the app on your phone and find the wedding procast in your library, scroll to the bottom and you can write a review. Reviews really help me reach more wedding pros. Reviews really help, like this one, and I'm probably going to pronounce this wrong from Euphoria. Wag a lot. I really look forward to each episode of Donna's podcast. Started in 2020, the worst year ever for weddings, Donna remains upbeat, positive, and has some inspirational guests. So, thank you so much for that review. They really do help us to get our message out there to more people. So, I do hope that you will consider leaving a review too. You might hear it on an upcoming episode. So, thank you so much for listening. I I hope to see you here next week. Bye bye for now. Don't forget to hit those stars and leave a review of the podcast where you listen if you found value in what you heard today. It's a free way you can help the podcast reach more people just like you.